we want to be able to be up close. We want to be able to see these really beautiful and powerful animals. And so people will have them in their homes as pets. People will have them in sanctuaries. People will have them in exhibits. They're always right there so that humans can get as close to them as possible. It's really great to love something, but you have to love it properly. And sometimes I think you can love something to death. The tiger is a really good example of that in America, in my opinion. We can learn a lot from actually seeing the wildlife, but I think more so by getting perspectives from people who are actually living among these animals. It's been very frustrating to connect the loss of tigers in the wild to what is happening with the private possession in the U.S. You run into the risk of talking about a release program for these animals. The expense is astronomical. You have to be able to train these animals to exist on their own. The average tiger cub will stay with its mom for about two to two and a half years to learn how to survive. You have to figure out how to facilitate that with, while remaining a absolute minimal presence for humanity. And then you have to be able to provide it an area where it can be released, where it can actually survive. Seeing a tiger in the zoo being artificially rare and artificially this thing is like seeing a picture on a wall. There's really no lesson that you learn. Because you're not seeing how it lives, how it kills, how it uh, breeds, how it, you know, there's, there's, that, there's nothing really to learn other than the fact that it's a nice image. After seeing a tiger in the wild and recognizing what a privilege that was, and realizing in that moment even more than I knew before, like, this is where they belong. This is where this animal belongs and deserves to live.